But there's something about Van Gogh's legacy which is much more important than his fathering this or that ism of modern art. Vincent's passionate belief was that people wouldn't just see his pictures, but feel the rush of life in them. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most credible voice in true crime. Today we're doing uh, part two of the letters that were exchanged between the Van Gogh family. Uh, yesterday we dealt with the letter he wrote to his mother and today is really um, an astonishing pair of letters, one to his sister Wilhelmin and another from his brother Theo back to Vincent and as you're going to see that they're both really interesting letters. Uh, I must apologize for how late this video is being made. I would have liked to have brought it out much earlier today. To be honest, earlier today I was sitting <laughs> at my computer I was recording chapter 14 of Beneath the Oil in the uh, Chris Watts audiobook which is on Patreon. That particular uh, chapter is on the th $3 tier but most most of the chapters on the $5 tier and I, I actually fell asleep um, sort of mid midway through the recording. It's not as though I recorded and just fell asleep. I was sort of recorded, stopped edited something out and but you know in a pause I literally fell asleep at my chair and, and I kind of had to go and lie down I think I slept for about two hours I was really really tired I had a very tough day yesterday and um, it kind of made me think about you know I was on my feet for six and a half hours just kind of standing around it kind of made me think about Van Gogh just because he his, his um, daily thing was walking somewhere and then setting up his easel obviously he didn't sit down and paint his student painted and um, that probably also involved a lot of weariness in his feet and in his legs and he, he was well known as an incredible walker he um, sometimes walked uh, many 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 miles at a time you know like 40 50 miles so uh, I think at one point he walked from London to Ramsgate. So it's pretty amazing. So um, so I'm going to continue um, in this episode with those two letters. And as you're about to see, there, there's just some wonderful insights in that. And obviously I'm going to continue with the series on Vincent van Gogh. We will pick up the narrative in four days' time on the 10th with uh, w when the, the other letters flow from from that particular point in time. If you're interested in following this remarkable journey, um, tragic ultimately, unfortunately, uh, do, dis do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, share, leave a comment and let's get started. So we kick off with the letter to Villamin uh, on the Thursday the 5th of June and just to put you in the ballpark there are six Van Gogh children there are three brothers and three sisters and I think there was also a seventh uh, child that was still born so, so ultimately there were actually seven Van Gogh children um, Vincent was the oldest uh, there were two two other brothers Theo that is well known and then Kor who is less well known who actually went to South Africa and then there's also uh, there's Wilhelmin, Elizabeth who me called Lis uh, and then also Anna uh, the same name as his mother I could be wrong but my impression is that he was quite close to Wilhelmin uh, he wrote more letters to his sister Wilhelmin than to his other other siblings as far as I'm aware in the same way that he didn't really correspond or say much to his brother Cor. So among among the siblings Vincent got along apparently better with Theo and Wilhelmin than, than with the other f other four siblings. And so this is what he writes to Wilhelmin. My dear sister I ought to have replied to your two letters long since which I received while still in Saint-Rémy, 
but the journey, work and a host of new emotions up to today made me put it off from one day to the next. It interested me very much that you, you've you cared for patients at the Walloon Hospital. That's certainly how one learns heaps of things, the best and most necessary that one can learn. And I myself regret that I don't know nothing, in any event not enough, about all that. It was a great happiness for me to see Theo again, to meet Joe and the little one. Theo was coughing more than when I left him more than two years ago. But while talking and when I saw him at close hand, however, I considered him certainly rather changed for the better, all things considered, and Joe is full of both good sense and good will. The little one is not sickly but not strong either. It's a good system that if one lives in a large town, the woman gives birth in the country and spends the first months there with the little one. But there you are, for the first time especially as the birth is frightening, they certainly couldn't have done better or otherwise than they did. I hope that they'll come here to Orvez for a few uh, a few days soon. So once again, you can see him, I, w I won't say laying it on thick, but he certainly uh, cuts to the chase pretty soon, just saying that, um, you know, it's good to see his brother and, and he's, he's hoping that his brother's going to come visit him. Now, obviously, this is under the sort of impending visit to them in Holland. And so it's almost like he's giving them notice that, that he needs to see his brother as well. And maybe that they'll write to him and say, well, maybe you should go and see Vincent and, you know, um, all that kind of thing. Uh, is it, once again, he, he reinforces to his sister that Theo isn't completely healthy either, that he's, he's coughing and... Um, but he does sort of say that, that Theo seems to be kind of happy. And it's almost like he's, he's sort of saying, you know, his health may not be that great, but because he's married, because he's got a wife, because he's got a child, he's kind of doing well, if that makes sense. So he may not be physically healthy, like a picture of health, but he's um, happy and in that sense as well, if that makes sense. One could make the counter-argument with Van Gogh that also he may not be physically well, but he was somewhat unhappy, and so in that sense he wasn't well. But that doesn't mean anything more than that. It doesn't mean he was mad. It doesn't mean that um, you know he had some kind of disorder. It simply means that you know how well you are is, is sometimes a matter of one's state of mind and circumstances you know where you are in life you know are, are you successful are you failing are you troubled are you triumphing are you succeeding are you struggling so he um he talks about hoping that they would come to Orvez for a few days soon right and that, let's put some emphasis on that that he's hoping to see his brother again soon he saw him very briefly and then you know um now he's really hoping to just um, break the spell of loneliness. He's, he's trying to just, you know, um, reconnect with those close to him. Then he writes further, he says, For me the journey and the rest up to now have gone well, and coming back to the north dis distracts me a lot. Then I found in Dr. Gachet a ready-made friend, and something like a new brother would be. So much do we resemble each other physically and morally too. He's very nervous and very bizarre himself and has rendered much friendship and many services to the artists of the new school as much as was in his power. I did his portrait the other day and I'm also going to paint that of his daughter who is 19. He lost his wife a few years ago which has greatly contributed to breaking him. We were friends, so to speak, immediately, and I'll go and spend one or two days a week at his house, working in his garden, of which I've painted two studies, one with plants from the south, aloes, cypresses, marigolds, the other one with white roses, vines, and a figure. Then a bouquet of buttercups, and with that I have a larger painting of the village church, an effect in which the building appears purplish against a sky of deep and simple blue of pure cobalt. The stained glass windows look like ultramarine blue patches. The roof is violet and in part orange. 
in the foreground a little flowery greenery and some sunny pink sand. It's again almost the same thing as the studies I did in Newnan of the old tower and the cemetery. Only now the colour is probably more expressive, more sumptuous. But in the last few days at saint Rami, I worked like a man in a frenzy, especially on bouquets of flowers, roses and violet irises. And then he talks a little bit more about Theo. So I'm, I'm going to get to that in a sec. Get back to that in a second. So a couple of points to emphasize in this really interesting couple of paragraphs dealing with Dr. Gachet. So first of all, he kind of is instantly bragging about the fact that that he's sort of made a pal that that is. He's got a, a friend in Dr. Gachet. And um, the way I know Van Gogh, the way I've understood him, you know, I've written a book about him, is Van Gogh is quite, um, quite an emotional guy. He's quite an impatient sort of guy. He's quite an intense character as well. And he struggles with his relationships with people is not the easiest guy to get along with including you know his own family members he also lived with his brother and his brother found him hard to live with he moved in with his parents for uh, he, he moved in with his parents for a while as well they had the same experience we know what happened with Gorgar and so yeah he's kind of rushing it as well he's sort of like well I've met Dr. Gesh and we pals not really I mean they are hanging out and maybe they sort of you know but you know friendship takes time to develop and it's almost like Van Gogh has sort of snapped his fingers and said hey we're friends you know we and he's, he's trying to sort of rush the whole thing of I'm back in the world I'm back you know but he's not and um, you sometimes do have that situation where you've been very lonely and then you are desperate for fr for friendship and you kind of gloss over the things you disagree with and then they catch up with you and often with devastating effect. Uh, things that you brush aside kind of catch up to you and, and can overwhelm you and overrun you. But why does that happen? Because of this sort of desperation to, um, you know, not be alone anymore. This desperation to, to quickly form friendships and, and, and sometimes you... Desperate people form friendships that are not ideal, right? Um, it's almost like desperate people um, end up with sort of desperate relationships kind of thing. And um, anyway, so to carry on, he also des describes how they resemble one another, that they look, um, you know, they both have sort of ginger hair and... Um, and he says that they resemble one another morally as well. In other words, that they've got similar uh, religious views. I'm not sure if that's completely accurate, but we'll leave that for now. He, he, then he describes Dr. Gachet's temperament. He says he's very nervous and very bizarre himself. Now, again, I uh, believe Dr. Gachet is the man who murdered Vincent van Gogh. And so... What is going to make him nervous? What is going to make Dr. Gachet nervous about Vincent van Gogh? Well, we're going to find that out. But the fact is, he is a nervous fellow and he's a, a strange guy. You know, he's strange in, in certain ways. And he's, he goes on to say, you know, he's friendly to many artists and um, so on. And so... To Dr. Gachet, Vincent van Gogh's not really a special case, even though actually he was. Um, it's just another artist that is helping out and, and, and being friendly to. And for Dr. Gachet, it's, it's, it's kind of all in a day's work. You know, he makes his home uh, available. But he doesn't realize who he's dealing with. He doesn't know Van Gogh very well. He thinks he knows him based on his brother. But he doesn't really know him. He doesn't, he doesn't really realize who he's dealing with. And in the beginning, obviously, Van Gogh is able to present himself as a solid guy. And, um, but 
is is that not going to wear off after a relatively short time? And isn't that what happened? What is also amazing is that Van Gogh kind of does some of these incredibly famous portraits right in the first couple of days when he arrives. Not only the portrait of Dr. Gachet, but also the village church. And um, I also photographed the church of Orvez when I was there. Unfortunately, there was quite a bit of scaffolding around the church, which sort of ruined the picture. But it is a centerpiece of Orvez, the church. And even when you walk up the sort of ridge to the wheat fields behind the, the village, um, you can see the the sort of triangular spire of the church sticking out for, for a long way. So uh, I will show you guys uh, pictures of that. Uh, what is very interesting is his very famous picture, Wheat Field with Crows, is kind of painted basically directly behind the church, if you didn't know. So, so now you will know that. But, but I will show you those photos in due course as we get to know Orvez and so on. The other thing that's fascinating is he talks about um, that he also wants to do his por the portrait of his daughter. I think it's something that he's now said to his brother. In other words, he said to his brother that he wants to paint Marguerite. He's told his mother that he's going to paint Marguerite. And now he's telling his sister as well. And, um, and then in the next line, he says... He lost his wife a few years ago. It was actually 1875. And and it was actually apparently to tuberculosis, although there is another possibility. Anyway, he says, um, and this has greatly contributed to breaking him. So he's kind of describing Dr. Gachet as a broken spirit, as someone who is sort of grieving, um, who is um, maybe a little bit... Um, unhappy or depressed or grieving, you know, um, because of because he's lost his wife. In the same way, one could say that Van Gogh is a is a broken person just because he spent so long struggling with his work, uh, suffering with his work. Um, not that he's um, broken at this moment, but certainly he has been broken in the past. He's his, his spirit has been seriously hurt by circumstances. Um, the ear incident being one of them, the, ti the whole time that he was in, in the asylum, I wouldn't say he was a broken spirit, but, it, but his spirit was certainly hurt by that experience, I think, and also by the loss of what was looking like a great moment, a great period. That old time in all was, was a... Was a opportunity for growth not only for Van Gogh but for both artists and it's one of the most famous friendships or alliances or meetings of, of artists in the history of art is is that moment that meeting of Van Gogh and Gauguin it's, it's one of the most historical moments in art and um, Van Gogh felt the loss of that as well and anyway so he talks about um, that he's, he's going to paint Gachet's daughter, but what he doesn't really acknowledge here is that he, he had actually painted her already. It's not clear whether he did it with Marguerite's um, permission, but there is a... In the next paragraph, he talks about um, we were friends, so to speak, immediately. That's Vincent and Dr. Gachet. And then he says... And I'll go and spend one or two days a week at his house working in his garden. So, so here he is, you know, he's maybe two days a week at the house. I think he kind of gave it a bit of a different spiel to his mother where I think he said he, he could sort of come and go as he pleased. But anyway, and then he says he's already painted um, a figure in the garden. Guess who that figure was? Guess, guess who the figure is? in the garden with the cypresses and the marigolds and the white roses. It's Marguerite. And so in a weird way, he's already painted Marguerite kind of without her permission. So she hasn't posed. She hasn't sat for him as she would later with a piano. Um, he's kind of painted her without her knowledge or without her necessarily posing. And, um, 
and this is where I want you to kind of activate your imagination. What do you think Van Gogh is thinking when he's sitting in the garden and sitting um, or standing, whatever it is, painting in Gachet's garden and this 19, 20 year old young woman is sort of walking through the garden. You know, it's, it's her home, right? And it's a nice home and it's a nice garden. And what is she doing in the garden? She's perhaps watering the garden, perhaps cutting some flowers. And it's kind of a weird situation where he's there and she's there. And she might be quite shy. And she might, in the beginning, have felt like, well, I, I'm, I'm a bit too shy to go out while this, this dude is here. And then later on felt, well, you know, he's, they're getting along, you know, this guy and my dad. Okay, well, and then she eventually becomes a little bit more familiar with him and, and a bit more trusting. And um, th that, again, is the the uh, subtext to this rapid friendship between Gachet and Van Gogh. And, you know, is it a real friendship or is it just, you know, um, Gachet wants something from Van Gogh, which is to learn how to be an artist. And Van Gogh wants something from Gachet, which is kind of that he can say that they pals, that he can start um, presenting himself as, you know, um, someone who has reconnected with society, who's got a friend at least. And also, um, what else does he want from, he wants the networking from Dr. Gachet, but maybe he wants something more. Maybe he wants uh, closer contact with his daughter. Maybe he wants the opportunity to talk to this young woman. Maybe he wants, and, and again, imagine Van Gogh is painting there and he's a 37 year old guy and he's painting the garden and he's painting the shapes of the flowers and the petals and the colors and he's also noticing marguerite i mean if he's painting her he's noticing her he's looking at her dress he's looking at her hair he's looking at the color of her hair he's looking at the sun on her skin he's looking at her face and he's allowed to do that because he's painting her so if she was just sort of happened to be in the garden or something and he wasn't painting her um, he, he wouldn't really have the excuse to look at her, but now he does. Now he can stare at her and she can sort of look up and see, wow, he, he's looking at me. And there may be this moment of recognition. Oh, wow, you, you painted me. And then maybe he said, well, w would you like me to paint your portrait? And then she may have felt, wow, I'm flattered or whatever. And he may have felt, wow, uh, I'm so glad that I can do this. I want to paint your portrait and... I'm glad that I'm going to have the opportunity or something like that. And maybe that's how it came about. And, and this whole scene is depicted beautifully in the animated um, film Loving Vincent. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely uh, aspect to that. And, and it's one that is not that well known. And so it's, it's great that it's depicted in, in Loving Vincent. And they take it quite a lot further. And... I really, I, I really want to recommend that you try and watch Loving Vincent if you can. Uh, I can provide you with a link to it where you can watch it on, I think it's Vimeo. If you need me to, to provide you with that link, let me know and I'll leave it for you in the comments. Let me know. Otherwise, just Google it or um, try and watch the movie somehow. You can even maybe buy it. But um, I think it is free to watch online on Vimeo, so check it out. So to resume with the, uh, the letter, he goes on to say, For Theo and Joe's little one, I brought back a rather large painting, which they have hung above the piano, white almond blossoms, big branches on a sky blue background, and in the apartment they have a new portrait of an Olysienne. My friend Dr. Gachet is decidedly enthusiastic, and this is emphasized, about this latest portrait of the Olysienne, one of which I also have myself, and about a portrait of myself, and that gave me pleasure, since he'll drive me to do figure work, and I hope he'll find me a few interesting models to do. So, again, it's the second time that he's referred to this. Um, he's referred to the same thing in the, the letter to... I can't remember if it was to his mother or his brother, but he mentioned the models as well. I think it's to his, his brother. 
Uh, then he goes on to say, what I'm most passionate about, much, much more than all the rest in my profession, is the portrait, the modern portrait. I seek it by way of color and I'm certainly not alone in seeking it in this way. I would like, and this is also emphasized, you to see, I'm far from saying that I can do all this, but anyway, I'm aiming at it. I would like to do portraits which would look like apparitions to people a century, a century later. It's quite an interesting way of putting it. Um, one thing that I must uh, highlight here is I think the painting that he did where the figure appears in the garden of Marguerite Gish, I think is terrible. I think, I think the, the figure itself is horribly executed. I don't think it's done very well at all. It, it's, it's, it's a poor attempt. It's a poor, um, I, I, for me, um, Van Gogh has his moments and he's pretty good at portraits of the face, but to me, he is, is quite terrible at drawing the full human figure, you know, like of somebody walking or something. He's just not a very good artist in that respect. Uh, and I think he needed a bit more practice in, in, that, in that area. And I think particularly <laughs> the, the picture of, Doct uh, of Dr. Gachet's daughter in the garden is, is um, executed terribly. I don't think the ultimate portrait that he did of Marguerite was very good either. And then he also would eventually do a portrait of the innkeeper's daughter, which I think is also horrible. But I think some of his self-portraits aren't bad and some are even quite good. And I think his portrait of Dr. Gachet was certainly one of his better portraits. Anyway, to continue, he says, I don't try to do... Um, I don't try to do us by photographic resemblance, but by our passionate expressions. Now, bear in mind, photography was already around by then. In fact, it had been around for 40 years. But the difference between a black and white photo and a portrait is that you can imbue a portrait with color and vitality and, and energy. And there is definitely something different to a black and white photo which is flat and empty and and kind of you know lacking in vitality and you know imbuing it with energy and personality and just kind of an x factor and that so that was the challenge for him was knowing that the there is um the photographic option and then giving the portrait some kind of spice something that is making it kind of compelling then he goes on to say, thus the portrait of Dr. Gachet shows you a face the color of an overheated and sun-scorched brick with a reddish head of hair, a white cap in surroundings of landscape, blue background of hills. His suit is ultramarine blue. This brings out the face and makes it paler, despite the fact that it's brick colored. The hands, hands of an obstetrician, are paler than the face. So all, all of these things he notices... He goes on to say, before him on a red garden table, yellow novels and a dark purple foxglove flower. So there he actually identifies the flower if there was any doubt about what it was. Uh, when I was in his garden last year, there, there were foxgloves as well. He says, my portrait of myself is almost like this too, but the blue is a fine southern blue and the suit is light lilac. The portrait of the Elysian is of a colorless and matte flesh tone. The eyes calm and very simple. The clothing black, the background pink, and she's leaning her elbow on a green table with green books. I don't particularly like the portrait of the Elysian. Um, that's just my feeling. So I'm just going to skip a little bit ahead. He talks about certain artistic things and figures and so on. And... Um, then eventually he says, all humanity, all nature is simplified, but how could it be if it isn't already? And then he says, this description doesn't say anything, but by seeing the painting, by looking at it for a long time, one would think one was present at an inevitable but benevolent rebirth of all things that one might have believed in, that one might have desired, a strange and happy meeting of the very distant days of antiquity, antiquity with raw modernity. So... If you just look at this 
Leda, is there any sign again of despair, of unhappiness, of struggle, of difficulties with sanity, of unhealthiness, right? None of it. If anything, it's about opportunity and um, feeling encouraged and, and looking forward to the future and forming friendships and, and, and um, you know, positive things that are going on in his life. You know, he's, he's in, a, in someone's garden and they're well-to-do people and he's, 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 he's becoming part of the fabric in Orvez and, and he's um, reaching out to his family and we are about to see Theo's response to that. He, he also says, I was also pleased to see Andre Bonger again. He, he looked strong and calm and my word reasoned with great accuracy on autistic things. It pleased me very much that it come during the days when I was in Paris. Thank you again for your letters. More soon. I kiss you in thought. Ever yours, Vincent. I mean, he's talking about being pleased. He's, he's essentially in a state of grace, a state of happiness, a state of contentedness, a state of renewed expansion and just increasing himself as the summer is increasing across France, right? And now we're going to deal with Theo's response to Vincent's letter. It comes on the 5th of June, Thursday, which was yesterday, 130 years ago. As usual, it's, it's a fairly brief letter. I know we're already, you know, half an hour, just past half an hour in terms of this episode, but it's not a long uh, response. Again, written from Paris, and I must say my heart goes out to Vincent based on the contents of this letter. Um, he says, Theo writes, My dear Vincent, we are as pleased as can be that you were able to write to us and that you're still well, and that the stay in Orvez has had a rather good influence on your health. So it's not me. I'm I'm not sort of trying to spin this as Vincent van Gogh's well or healthy or whatever. It's obvious. Um, it's obvious to everyone. It's obvious to Dr. Gachet. It's obvious to Vincent. It's obvious to his brother. It's obvious to his family. It's no big secret. It's, it's, it's no, not strange. It's not a conspiracy. It's not um, me being overly imaginative or trying to twist anything. It's, it's obvious. Vincent van Gogh, when he arrived in Auvers, was fine. No problems whatsoever. He just carried on working and, and was just doing his thing. And then uh, um, something really interesting in Theo's letter, in the very second sentence, he says, Yesterday Dr. Gachet came to see me, and unfortunately there were people there which prevented me from talking with him much, but what he said to me was that he thought you cured, and what he saw, and, and that he saw no need at all for it to recur. So he's, the doctor is now saying to Theo, I think your brother's fine, and I don't think you have to worry about anything happening again. So, think about that. I mean, yeah, you've got the doctor uh, prognosticating on his patient and saying, he's fine. There's nothing wrong with him. He's just come out of the asylum. He's fine. And nothing's, nothing's, there's no reason why he's going to have any kind of episode in the future. Well, we will see about that, but I'm just saying it's not just Vincent who's just declaring himself healthy or his brother, it's also the doctor. So bear that in mind. Okay, so he goes on to say, he has invited us to come to his house next Sunday where you would be too. Meaning, Dr. Gachet has invited us, being Theo, his wife, and the child, to his house. And then he's saying, obviously, you're invited as well. And this is quite interesting, is that Vincent hasn't been invited, how can I put it? Vincent hasn't been invited directly, he's kind of been invited indirectly. So in other words, Vincent's been invited by Dr. Gachet, via the invitation to his brother, which is quite interesting. So one does kind of get the sense that Dr. Gachet is almost doing Theo a favor by taking Vincent in, right? Uh, almost in the same way that um, Paul Gorgar was doing Theo a favor by going to stay with Vincent. And, and you must bear in mind, 
Theo's an art dealer and Dr. Gachet has got relationships with artists and th there might be a strategic relationship going on there. You know, how can you make money out of this situation? So Vincent is almost, bear in mind, Vincent's a struggling artist, a failing artist. So the whole thing, you can kind of feel and sense both from Gorgar's perspective and Dr. Gachet's perspective that the favor is really being done to Theo. And Vincent's kind of just like, yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll help you out kind of thing. Of course, Vincent doesn't see it that way. He sees it as, no, it's a genuine friendship. It's a genuine thing. But is it? Is it a genuine friendship? Well, that friendship's going to be tested as we're about to see. And when is a friendship tested? When there's an argument, when there is a dispute, what happens? So uh, he goes on to say, he's invited us to come next Sunday. And Theo says, we don't well like to do it. But all the same, it isn't possible for Joe to promise it outright. So he's saying, we definitely want to go, but, but Joe just can't commit right now. And he says, repeating what he said a little bit earlier, he said, we went to St. Cloud on Whit Sunday, and there we had that terrible downpour that must have fallen where you are too. Although the little one didn't catch cold, he's been all upset since then, probably by the crowd we were obliged to pass through. So he's, he's kind of talking about, he's worried about infection, he's worried about the health of his family, especially the little, the little child. And you get this sense of concern about health right um, based around all that and um, one reason Theo is concerned is because it is a real concern I mean Theo as we know would be dead within a couple of months from this point so his own health is a fact although he doesn't really refer to it and that's something that's quite commendable from Theo's he doesn't complain about his health he doesn't talk about his health, he doesn't talk about how he's feeling, he doesn't talk about his concerns over his health, but he does talk about his concern over his brother's health. That's quite touching, isn't it? Anyway, he goes on to say, uh, would you go and see Dr. Gachet and tell him that if the weather is fine, we accept with great pleasure, but that we dare not promise outright and that if we come, we'd want to be home again before the evening. So what Theo is saying here is... Um, you know, he didn't tell he didn't tell Doctor Gesher that he's accepting the invitation. But uh, let's play it by ear. And if the weather is good, if it's a nice, warm, sunny day and, and no chance of rain, then we'll we'll come on that day. But we're not going to stay long. We're going to leave the same day so that everything's going to be okay. So think about what this means to Vincent. Is it, it's Thursday. And he's saying, well, we'll come and see you guys next Sunday. Not, well, I'm not 100% sure if it's, uh, let's just have a look. I'm not 100% sure if next Sunday meant the very next Sunday or the Sunday after that. I guess we'll find out uh, eventually. But um, obviously Van Gogh has now got his feet in his, you know, is, is sort of very on tenterhooks in the sense of he's now, it's going to be depending on the weather, whether he's going to see his brother. And so you can imagine the stress, you know, please be, let it be a nice day because I really want to see my family. I really want to see my brother. So he's kind of got that, that he's got to worry about in a sense. And um, also that it's not going to be for very long. His brother's going to arrive and leave on the same day, which means it's not going to be a very long thing. And he's going to kind of going to have to share his brother with Dr. Gachet and share his, his family with Dr. Gachet. It's unfortunate that it's not a overnight stay because that would make it a, a, a more relaxed thing. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so he says, um, <clears throat> uh, there's a train at 550H, which we'd take. Um I think that's in the morning, so a six o'clock train, and uh, we'd leave with the ten twenty-five train, which arrives in Chaponval at eleven twenty-six.
Okay, wait, I'm following now what he's saying. The train at 5.58 is actually um, in the evening. So looks like he's saying that they would leave at about 6 o'clock in the evening from Chaponval and that they would arrive on the 10.25 train from Paris, so mid-morning, um, and arrive in Chaponval at 11.26. So just to be clear, uh, when I was in Auvers, um, there are a couple of stations all along Auvers and Chaponval is on the one end of Auvers, who was, it's, it's in fact very close to where I stayed in the second house that I stayed there. I'm still going to take you guys through that stay, but don't, don't be confused by Chaponval. Chaponval is essentially Auvers. It's just more the, um, the one side of Auvers and I guess closer to Dr. Gachet's home than the other station. Um, so I'll, I'll show you photos of Chaponval as well. In fact, the, the exact restaurant and uh, station where where Theo would have arrived. Um, then he says the doctor said to get off there, so he'd actually gotten instructions from the doctor on how to get there, and that does make sense because Chaponval station is not far from Doctor Gachet's house. And then he says that he wanted to come to meet us, so that the doctor is going to actually meet them at the station. So it's quite interesting. It's not necessarily. Van Gogh that's going to meet his own family maybe he's going to meet them at his house I don't know maybe maybe that is to prevent Van Gogh from having an episode or stressing himself out or something then he sort of concludes the letter um, basically saying my dear fellow the letter had to wait a while again and I, I must finish it in haste the exhibition is giving me an enormous amount of work, but also satisfaction. So once again, he's kind of just saying to his brother, sorry, you know, I'm, I'm kind of really busy. So I've had to wait to get this letter back to you. And also, um, I'm busy. I, I kind of got stuff going on. He says there's another exhibition going on. And um, he says, Tasse has sent the colors today and they leave tomorrow with the bogues or something. Gulami has placed at your disposal a magnificent painting which was at Tanguy's uh, sunset. It will look good in your studio. Gusson wants to do an exchange with you. Anything you want of his in exchange for what you want to give him. I told him to come one day with me to see you at your place. Aurea will also come one day. That's the art critic. So that's quite interesting. He's, he's talking about various artists that want to swap their art for his. And then also the art critic is sort of waiting in the wings. He also wants to come. I don't know why Van Gogh doesn't say, hey, send the art critic. Um, you know, let's, let's get the show on the road. Um, and then he goes on to say, he's very pleased with your painting, meaning Aurier, and will come with me one Sunday to see you. And then he ends it off saying, I must say goodbye. I'll come in any case at the stated time. Jo sends her, her warm regards and a smile from the little one. Yours, Theo. Oh, and then he adds a postscript. He says, don't wear yourself out and take good care of yourself. Regards to the doctor. And then finally he says, have your things finally arrived. Okay, and then that's it. That's the letter from Theo, quite a touching letter. But can you see how the dynamics are starting to evolve between all the different people? But especially between Vincent, Dr. Gachet, and it's, although it's not stated very clearly and directly, but also with Marguerite, she, she's sort of coming to the fore. I mean, he's already painted her. So she's already part of this fabric. And uh, we'll get more to grips with it in the letters from four days from now on the 10th of june uh, thank you for listening wherever you are uh, take care make sure you get enough sleep and are looking after your immunity and uh, i'll see you guys next time